What's up guys? My name is Cassie Amber and I'm going to take you on a WBFF prep files video or vlog kind of thing. So I thought this would be interesting to do just to show my struggles along the way, different little diet hacks and things that I'm doing, different things I find difficult, staying motivated for the gym, all that kind of jazz. So if you're interested in competing or just interested in this lifestyle in general, it could be Good to know, or even if you're just looking for tips on how to stay consistent in your healthy routine. So this is my second show in April coming up. So it'll be a two year break between my first one. The first show I went through a breakup. I'd always looked up to these women online and then I went through a breakup and decided, you know what, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna step on one of the biggest stages for one of the like the most well-known bodybuilding competition straight off the bat without doing any of the smaller ones first. So WBFF stands for World Beauty Fitness Fashion and I like that one because it's so glam. IFBB is focused mainly solely on the body and all of the bikinis are the same shape. You just pick your color and it's very, um, yeah, like everyone has the same pose. So it's like very body comparison, but WBFF, a huge part of your mark is based on stage presence, marketability, a whole host of different factors and they really leave it up to you to make it your own on the stage. So you have your own posing routine, everyone's bikinis are out the gate, <laughs> so beautiful and you can have any design as long as it accentuates your body in the best way possible kind of thing. So. For those of you who don't know me, I am a plant-based nutritionist. So I just do a 90%, 90 to 95% approach, but obviously that's a very different dieting mechanism compared to pretty much every other competitor because they all focus on animal products for their source of protein. So I'm trying to show people that you can build your muscles and grow your physique and get lean eating plant-based foods because I just like to challenge the norms, I guess, and it obviously makes me feel good, <laughs> but it's just so funny when, like, I was having all these doubts about myself, like, oh my god, what if I jump on stage, and what if I haven't even grown since the last show, what if I still look exactly the same, I've been through so much mental stuff with, like, moving houses, and yeah, just detrimental environments, leaving an unhealthy relationship, all that kind of thing, so I haven't been on track the whole time. Even last year, I was like barely, yeah, for basically two years, like was not even really eating properly, even though I'm a nutritionist, just because of my mental health. So I'm going to show you some of the meals that I'm making. I'm also in the process of launching a plant-based recipe app. So some of the foods I'll put in there, I've got like breakfast, lunches, dinners, uh, snacks and things like that. But I also have a category for comp prep hacks, which is either low calorie options or high protein options if you're in like a strict kind of dieting phase. At this stage, while I'm brainstorming it all, I think for the other categories, I'll leave them no calorie or macro tracking because I don't even do that in day to day life. But starting now, I actually have to for the show. Um, so I'll only put calories and macros for the comp prep hack. So the rest of normal life, I kind of focus on intuitive eating and stuff like that. And tracking is even very new to me. So I've been very against it and had so much of a grudge against tracking food. I always forget if you're out at someone's house and you don't know what you've eaten, it's just such a drag. So I'm trying to challenge myself. And I heard this saying once related to finance, what isn't measured can't be improved. So my boyfriend actually zhuzhed up my Excel sheet because last year, I was supposed to be doing a prep and I put together this Excel sheet so every week I could calculate if I was on track for my calories and macros and kind of just have like an overall weekly view of how my progress goes throughout the cut. But it's such a drag to enter it in. So he made it all pink and stuff. And <laughs> when I hit my goals, like if I hit my protein target, the little box turns green and if I'm like nearly there, it's orange. So it's kind of like a game now to put it in. So I'll put a calendar reminder in my phone um, so every week I'll hop on there on a Sunday, enter in my weight. I'm not even used to weighing myself. So enter in my weight, calories, and like how, see how I'm hitting my goals. And use it just as a challenge. And even with the app, because I hate tracking, 
seeing what I can do to find high protein plant-based alternatives that are easy to track and simple ingredients. So I'd kind of use it as a challenge to myself to come up with all these meals for the app. So use it as a positive thing to work towards. I'm also way behind in where I thought I was supposed to be prepping and I went to New Zealand and I've been following this girl online and she's doing the same show as me and she's doing bikini so she's not even in my category but she's like yeah 16 weeks out blah blah, blah. and I was like oh maybe she's like got her dates wrong so she's prepping way before she needs to or maybe she switched to a different show <laughs> and then once I got back from my holiday two and a half weeks and I sat down and actually calculated it in my calendar I'm like oh my god I thought I was like 20 weeks out or even 23 weeks it's literally 14 weeks <laughs> so, so that was just cracking me up but i actually had a mini breakdown and i messaged my friend and she said honestly for the last show you did it in six weeks and you got third so this is more than double the time it's almost triple kind of thing and you already have the muscle you just have to keep maintaining it and my new zealand trip i had two and a half weeks off the gym because i had didn't have access with a car my family moved way out into the country then I was at festivals and I actually couldn't get a pump on for so long so I just have started back last week and I'm gonna to go to a session now I just made my breakfast and oat milk iced coffee I've switched to oat even though I usually I have soy um, just because it tastes really nice but soy has more protein but oat milk is so good so I'll show you what I made for breakfast and then I'm gonna to head to the gym Okay, so first up, one of the breakfasts I'm making is a uh, bacon and avocado open toasty kind of thing. So I've got some sourdough bread. Um, we do not have a toasty yet in the new house, so we toast the bread in the pan at the moment. Um, I'm using the sun-fed bacon, which is the most natural one that you can get from the supermarket. All whole foods. Uh, it's got 6.5 grams of protein per serve as well. And I just treated myself to this cheese as well. It would be higher in calories because it's made from nuts, but that tastes insane. So good. So it's made from cashews, water, nutritional yeast, garlic, onion, hickory liquid, smoke, a few other things, smoked paprika, all live culture, so it's good for your gut as well. And it's got four grams of protein per serve, but it's really delicious. And hot tip, if... <laughs> If you like coffee, but you buy your coffees out all the time and spend a fortune. So usually I have coffee machines at my house, but at the moment there's so many appliances we need to get, we're still getting set up. So if you actually get instant coffee and put it at the bottom of a glass, and also we do not have a jug, so we have to manually boil our water on the stove each time as well. So you add a dash of hot water and milk and then you've got a uh, iced coffee and it's actually pretty good i buy them a kona one usually caramel but they were all out so i just got hazelnut this time Oh my god so counting calories is definitely weird just eating intuitively for day-to-day -day life i'm just picking up to get ready for the gym and <laughs> i entered in these munch me snacks i got up at like midnight because i was still hungry i actually got 100 under my calories yesterday and that's like that never happens during a cut um so i was so proud of myself but then at midnight i was like oh my god i'm so hungry i'll just have a few of these and there was only a few left in the bag so just a small handful in normal life, I eat a bag as a snack. Like that is morning tea, or that's me like snacking on the couch after dinner, the whole bag. So this bag is actually six servings. <laughs> so one serving is actually four pieces of those little nut things. So that's where things get crazy when you start to focus on calories and how the labels 
and stuff kind of trick you even like a bag of chips you always eat a bag in one go but it, you're only meant to have like a tiny handful but who stops at one handful so all of this is kind of like a big learning experience when you focus actually on the energy density of foods instead of just feeling satisfied in your tummy So I just got back from my heavy leg day and walk and this is what I'm whipping up for lunch. Literally just doing it on a whim. Just realized actually I might need to find something green to put in there as well, uh, just for a pop of color. But just some plant-based chicken. It's the last mock meat I've got left in the fridge. Some cauliflower, tomato. And if you ever need quick carbs, honestly, butter beans are so nice. I literally eat them out of the can. <laughs> cold like with the, with the salty brine um but just honestly add that to the pan and this will literally take me a few minutes to make for a healthy meal Monday night, we did some shooting for my friend's gym accessory company. I'll show you a few snippets here. Uh, she wanted to get some more photos of her new products to put on her website. So we set up our, like a whole studio in our own lounge, which is really, really cool. And then we actually decided to do some 14 weeks out before photos and videos so we can track my progress at the end so we can make some cool reels and cool content out of it as well. So that is super exciting. Yesterday I did film some of the YouTube video but I actually did have a massive mental breakdown and it was not a good day like very bad depression laying on my office floor feeling so crappy um, so that was kind of a write off and today I'm back to it feeling 100% did some cleaning I filmed a video about entrepreneurship today because six weeks out i have to go back to new zealand because i've been booked for an event as well as my partner so i'll be doing a liquid drum and bass dj set for the morning yoga i'm hosting a nutrition workshop he's doing a shibari workshop on me and he's doing the event photography because he's on the media team for some of the best bush stuffs and festivals in australia so that's awesome but i've been stressing like how i'm meant to stay on track when i'm on the road i've had all this backlash not backlash for my family they're only worried but they basically wanted me to give up my business and just work full-time and stuff so I was really really dreading going back I didn't know how to navigate it how how am I, how am I even gonna eat healthy food when I've got to drive for hours what do you eat at the airport what do you eat on the plane uh, what about at the festival like is there gonna be food trucks there is there anywhere cold where I can store something a bit more nourishing so there's just all this stuff I had to work through so I filmed a really good entrepreneurship video so I'll link that here so definitely go check it out because that one will be going live first and yeah just feeling back to myself again and stopped in to get a green smoothie from the coffee club and I'll just track that in like usual and then I'm gonna go do a chest day so let's get to it Sticking to an exercise routine like this actually takes so much time. So I try to gym ideally five days a week, but sometimes it's four. And I try to walk the dog ideally four days a week. This walk around the lake is actually an hour 15, but sometimes it's just like 40 minutes or so. But honestly, with all that and the drive to get to the gym and the lake and everything, it honestly takes like the whole afternoon. So this is a yummy dinner that my partner cooked me. It was butter chicken, but I just added more greens to mine uh, just for more fiber and deliciousness and just to bulk it up as well. But we're heading off to a mini bushta for our engagement party tonight. So I just packed us for the road. This is just an iced coffee I made at home with oat milk. And this is just some tofu that I did in the air fryer. It comes pre-marinated, so it's just uh, crispy. So we're just gonna share that for breakfast and then stop and get a protein smoothie on the road. So that's just very simple and easy to get your intake in the morning, full of flavor. Bye, Millie. We're gonna miss you. Bye. <laughs> 
I have some exciting news for you. I will be opening up Back to Your Roots, my eight week coaching container for only 20 people. And it is the last time I'll be holding this program ever. If you're ready to take charge of your health and tune back in with your intuition, Back to Your Roots focuses on a different approach as we look into holistic healing and fixing the root cause of the problem, repairing our relationship with food and finding a long-term approach that works for your individual body. Let me show you how to fuel yourself without fearing foods, listen to your body signals, lean in and investigate cravings instead of feeling guilt or shame. So what can you expect? Eight weeks worth of exclusive educational videos delivered right to your inbox, a community chat where you can share your wins, challenges, ask questions and make friends with other people on a similar journey to you. And this time I'm also adding an eight week plant-based meal guide to go along with the program as well. So you'll get your whole meals laid out for you and lots of new delicious recipes to try. This will help with your energy and performance and when you feel like you can eat in abundance, things naturally fall into place when you tune into what feels good. I would love to work with you and lead the way for your mind, body and spirit, but remember there's only limited spots so I can give enough attention to everyone. So hit the link in the description below and get ready to kick off at the end of February. I'm so excited to hold this space for 20 people and I cannot wait to see your progress. What's up guys? So to finish off this video, I'm just gonna share with you a few things that I've learned in my prep so far and just talk about some of the extras that I'm cutting out or simple little swaps that I'm making so that I can reach my calorie and protein goals. So number one, the other night, my boyfriend made tacos for dinner and that's not something I usually make. I love this veggie mix mixture. I usually use veggie delights and then just add a can of crushed tomatoes and a can of kidney beans and it's like the perfect mince mixture to make nachos, lasagna, things like that and just cook it with onion and garlic, so simple. Uh, but he decided to make tacos and I did not realize that a taco shell literally has 200 calories. <laughs> Which when you think about it, all you get out of that is a bit of flavor and crunch. But to be smarter with your calories, that's literally a whole snack in itself that you can have during the day for 200 calories. So to be smarter about it, it's better to just mix it with salad, like just have the mince mixture. I stacked it up with lots of cos lettuce and a little bit of vegan mayo, and you could even just have it with some other kind of carbs, but I'm not gonna be having taco shells for the rest of this prep because that is just insane. Number two is coffee. Just by taking out, usually I add a coffee creamer and MCT oil to my coffee. So in total with the soy milk as well, that comes to 240 calories. But by just taking out those two supplements, it brings it down to 102 calories. So that's just such a huge saving just by having espresso and milk without the added extras. Number three, at night times I've been having protein mousse instead of chocolate and my partner's been very supportive the other night. I was like, I'm gonna have some chocolate and he's like, no chocolate, you can have a protein mousse and he got up and made one for me. So that's exactly what I need is just encouragement on the right path. So that just gives you an extra boost of protein at the end of the day, actually helps keep you feeling full. You get more bargain for the calories you're consuming. And for some added crunch, he also added some Oreos, which is delicious. And he also found these soy crisps, which I'd never bought them before. And I didn't know what they were, but they kind of are like a cereal, but it literally adds, for the serve I had in the protein bowl, I added 11 grams of protein, but for a full serving, it's actually 17.6 grams of protein, just for sprinkling that on top of your sweet treat or your yogurt or protein mousse or your fruit bowl. So that's actually a really, really good addition and good bang for your calories. Smoothie calories add up. The other day we went for a massive hike it was so beautiful and we stopped in at the coffee club to get another one of those green smoothies that are my absolute favorite. And then when Mikey was saying, oh, did you enter your food in for the day? Like you didn't eat lunch. And I was like, yeah, I had that smoothie, remember? And he's like, yeah, but that's not a meal. And I was like, it's about 500 calories for that. And he was shocked because it's just a drink, but you don't realize that smoothies are actually really high in calories as well. So I don't mind that kind of thing. I still crave that and it feels really nice to have that, but, you should class it as a meal if it's something as high calories that. 
So just on, with the smoothie itself, it's around 409 calories. And after you add protein powder, it brings it up to around 500 calories. So I always just add protein powder just to boost my content throughout the day. Number six is seeds. I got sent these from Pimp My Salad. It's a seaweed superfood. It's like sunflower seeds with kelp. And before I do prep and like, because I don't usually track food, I would never even second guess this. I would just like put seeds over everything. I still am having seeds in my stir fries for added crunch, but even for little things like this, like usually I would be like, oh, well, I know that seeds are really good for my joints and my hormones and my skin and my hair, and this is good for your thyroid due to the iodine as well. But in prep, seeds are really high in calories. So that's why in day-to-day -day life, I don't like to focus on the numbers because there's so much more to health than that. But during the cut, I'm trying to be more mindful of fats and things like that. And last but not least is oil. So this is my favorite oil. I get it sent over from New Zealand. It's so good. It's half coconut, half avocado. It's got flavor infusions in it already. That's what made me fall in love with veggies in the first place. But oil has 120 calories per tablespoon. So once again, that's a snack in itself. So when you're making stir fries and things like that, just be mindful not to pour oil into the pan. To me, I still have a bit of it because it allows me to really, really enjoy my veggies and really bulk up on those high fiber foods and lots of greens. It just makes it taste so nice and it makes it go crispy. It's heaven, but just don't go overboard with oils and stuff like that. So yeah, really things that I've learned is just like sticking to more whole foods. Even the other night I ate <laughs> some hash brown bites and that's like literally a third of my daily food just for this like little bowl of hash brown bites because it's more processed and I guess it has oil in it already because it's not just like a pure potato. So just little things like that and like the taco shells was a huge shock. So what I'm doing with my app is trying to find meals that are easier to track because that's one thing that puts me off and finding things that are high in protein like edamame, fettuccine or chickpea noodles and stuff like that. So it's a carb but also really high in protein and finding my favorite kinds of mock meats. The chicken schnitzel that I put on here the other day that blew my calories out of the water just for a tiny amount. But there's other kinds of mock meats that are more natural without the crumb, more seitan based that are higher in protein as well and make you feel full for the amount of food that you eat. So that's a wrap. Don't forget you can head to my Instagram to follow my journey. I'm sharing lots of physique updates on there so you can follow my cut and see how I go on the stage. Literally the day I'm filming this, we're 12 weeks out now. So that is super exciting. I'm finally getting in the zone, getting more consistent with my gym. And I had a bit of a freak out last week and was very, very stressed and not really on top of anything, including my exercise or my food, was very run down and fatigued, but I feel like I'm back and I'm ready to go. So don't forget to subscribe as well and tune back for next week's video. Thank you so much for watching.